for the long haul. Now, as I was doing this sermon um, and thinking of this beautiful passage from Colossians and talking about how we are all held together in Christ and the glorious strength that is ours that comes from Christ, I was thinking a lot about my time rock climbing and rappelling and all of the ropes that held us tight and fast and caught us when we lost our grip on the rock and thinking about all the trust that was built up between campers as we were belaying each other and holding each other in safety and trusting each other with that. Um, and so thinking of a rope and how critical and important that is um, for keeping us safe and keeping us in the game for the long haul. I mean, how amazing is it that we have Christ at the center of that rope and a strand that will never fray or will never become unusable? But then Mike, you know, does our sermon slide work and saw the title of In It for the Long Haul and being the pickup owner that he is, decided that a truck would be a much more fitting image. And please notice the red color and go and find Mike's truck in the parking lot of how we are committed to being in it for the long haul. Um, And as I was thinking about that, we have a lot to celebrate on this Sunday of completion, family, with the boxes that are behind me and the piles, and then thinking in just the few months that I have been in here with you, I'm looking at all of the hauling that has been done and thinking about the yard sale and all the pickup trucks um, that were used in taking furniture that wasn't working anymore and getting it to the yard sale to then take and make deliveries to the people who needed it as we're looking out for each other. Um, Not to mention the bike drive um, and helping people be able to get the bikes um, across the world where they were needed and doing pickups. And then trunk or treat because sometimes it's just enough to have some fun together and to put trunks and hauling to use for candy, right? What better thing to haul and to share? Um, And all of the work that has been done in this community that I am just beginning to glimpse and to get to know. And so I stand on a week of thankfulness, um, saying how thankful I am to be the pastor of a congregation that is so committed to a long haul and to whatever hauls that are needed, one for the other, as Sherry shared earlier, and joys and concerns. And so we come to look at what God can accomplish through our strength. The two verses that came before this reading in Colossians um, pull this all together for me. Um, So it's verse 9 and 11. Um, Since the day we heard about you, this is um, the letter being addressed to the congregation. So let's think of ourselves as the congregation. We haven't stopped praying for you and asking for you to be filled with the knowledge of God's will, with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. On a commitment Sunday, where we are looking to discern what resources we will put to the ministry, the bigger discernment is what does God need to accomplish through us? What is God's will for Epworth? What is what only Epworth and partnership with God can do for Cockeysville or can do for the world. And so we pray to be filled with the knowledge of God's will with all wisdom and with all spiritual understanding. And we're praying this so that we can live lives that are worthy of the Lord and pleasing to him in every way by producing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. I have heard stories of the generosity um, from this past year um, that made it possible for me to stand in front of you all today after multiple um, financial and budget meetings to say that we're doing well for this year because of the generosity that was shared last year. Because of the gifts that were given and because of the growth that was entrusted. Um, For next year, Um, We will be needing um, to increase our pledging as there's a $22,000 gap that we simply cannot close um, easily. We've done our due diligence in terms of the finance of being good stewards of the resources that we have been given. 
um, and, and making sure that it is funneled directly um, into the ministries and what is needed um, to sustain Epworth, um, the building and the staff and the ministry so that we can be in it for the long haul. But in order to continue that, um, we will need to increase those gifts um, for next year. And here's the kicker, quite frankly, we really want more. We're going to be honest about this. There's phenomenal work happening here, and we want the chance to be able to grow more and to do more. Um, with that hope that, you know, maybe this whole long haul doesn't have to be quite as long um, as, as it sometimes is. That in our giving and in our caring for each other, in giving a little bit more for the Holy Spirit to work through in a little bit more full way, that our city and our nation and our world might not have to wait quite as long for an experience of enough and of God's goodness through us. And so as we come to this time, I would ask that you put the strength, that glorious strength of Christ, as the scripture says, to use and to work, and that you take another step in trusting it. Um, I will say that um, working finances um, has been the most frustrating and rewarding part of adult life that I have stepped into. Um, it's terrifying. Um, and, and it's not a fun thing to do, and I will procrastinate and do anything else on the to-do list before sitting down with the computer to crunch numbers and face it because it's intimidating, um, but it's worth it. Um, I cannot tell you the personal experience of freedom that I have encountered in knowing that I am empowering what I believe in. Um, we have a former bishop, Joe Yako, who also always used to say, don't tell me what you believe, show me your checkbook, and I'll tell you what you believe in. Um, but the freedom and the satisfaction of knowing that you are doing all that you can um, with time and with how you're living, but how you're spending money um, is, I think, a very freeing and liberating experience. I still remember... Um, and the time I finally reached uh, the goal of tithing of 10%, um, and then um, also decided then to adopt and sponsor a child through Compassion International. It was when I was living in Adams Morgan, D.C., and if you know anything about Adams Morgan, if you know anything about me, there are plenty of really good restaurants there um, and really fun international shops with all kinds of the most colorful scarves you've ever seen. And one of those shops makes sure there's a huge display of them outside the shop um, so that you're attempted before you even um, walk through the door. And that, of course, was on my I commute um, to church every single day and seeing all of that color and being tugged and every day would be the no Kate no Kate back down you don't really need one until I started sponsoring Franklin and then all of a sudden I saw his face as soon as I looked at the scarves and I knew what I wanted to empower and all of a sudden there wasn't a poll or if it was, you know, a late night and all I wanted to do was just go out and have food cooked for me. Um, and again, seeing Franklin's face and being like, no, I need him to eat, period. And I have plenty at home. It's just going to take a few extra minutes. And those extra minutes are going to be worth it so that he has what he needs to live and to study and to grow. This is what stewardship is about. It's about setting aside a portion, a percentage of our income so that we practice and train ourselves to give the Holy Spirit space to work through us to provide enough for others just as many of us had the experience of having enough provided and blessed for with us. Making a pledge in particular is very important. Um, know that this is something that can be changed. We know that life happens. We're practical about this here at Epworth. And is this not a legally binding agreement? I'm not taking you to court if you don't make your pledge. That was a joke, guys. <laughs> um, and so it can be changed as life changes. But what it does is it sets this giving as a priority so that we rearrange other pieces of life 
around making, um, sharing our blessings um, at the top of what we do with our finances. Um, as um, I have an example of sharing and typically use, there was a friend of mine um, who was visiting uh, my church a few years ago, and as um, he was leaving, gave me a $5 bill and said, here, can you put this in um, the tip jar for me? I forgot. <laughs> um, we don't want giving to be the tip jar that we put in after everything else that we've done and whatever we happen to have left over. We want giving to be a priority that we make important in our lives and rearrange others around. For Abraham and myself, um, we've had conversations this year. I will be tithing my income and a little bit more. Um, as many of you know, Abraham is still not employed um, and is um, will forever have my gratitude and thanks um, for uh, sacrificing his employment security so that I could follow my appointment call here to Epworth. Um, and we are continuing um, to work, and I ask for your prayers um, as he's doing um, and going through the grueling process that many of you know um, in terms of the anxiety of what it means to be unemployed um, and, and figure out how to move forward. Um, our step of faith is to continue tithing um, my salary um, and part half of our housing allowance. Um, we are going to leave a $1,000 uh, margin for wiggle room um, in terms of being able to give to other places and being able to cover um, what's going on right now for both of us. And so I share that. Um, so that you know um, my pledge and my commitment and that I am not asking anything of anyone else that I do not ask of myself um, and that this is a commitment that we make um, and it's in process. Um, I'm not perfectly tithing my entire package because fear and anxiety is a real thing and I don't want anyone <laughs> Um, to feel that we are asking them to devastate themselves financially, um, but I, because there is a practicality to take into account in all of this. And I want you to be okay, and I know that we don't yet live in the perfect world where God's, world, God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven, and everyone has enough. So I know that there are things that we need to take into account. But I also know how hard it is to risk and how much of a push that we sometimes need, and I'm speaking from myself, to get there, um, and that this is a time to trust God um, and to trust our community um, and to give the Holy Spirit a little bit more to work with um, because there will be a way that is made forward because that's what God in Christ has been doing since the beginning of time, reconciling all powers to God's self so that all of us in Christ have a glorious strength in which we are all held together and which all of the loads of hauling are done not just in the, oh my gosh, here's another thing that is needed to be done, but in the joy of being the right person in the right place at the right time through whom the Holy Spirit can work to bring a blessing and to bring a taste of what it will be like for God to reign in fullness and for God's kingdom to be on earth. And so I want to close with um, chapter 2, verse 19 of Colossians. Um, and our call to hold on to Christ as the head of our body, from whom the whole body is nourished and held together, trusting that there will be nourishment and financial resources for all of us, that we are held together in Christ by its ligaments and sinews, that the stronger the entire body is, the stronger we are, and the more that we are able to grow in a growth that is of God. And so as we prepare to grow together this coming year, I would ask that our commitment this week be to financially undergird that growth 
um, that we increase our giving so that we can maintain the ministries and the work that Christ is doing through us, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And also for those of us who are called to take another extra step and to go an extra mile um, in this road, that we do so to create even more opportunities of growth, for even more opportunities, for more to be strengthened so that we might all share a taste um, in this joy and in this work that is made possible through Jesus the Christ, God made visible for us. There are baskets um, here in the middle of the aisles, and Elaine will be playing Give Thanks um, for us. Join in in singing um, as um, you feel, because we are giving so that the weak may be strong and the poor may be made rich. <laughs> 